Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Creative Proteomics channel. Today's topic is protein sequencing. In this video, we will introduce three techniques for three protein sequencing. Atman degradation, peptide mapping, and protein de novo sequencing. Below, we will introduce the principles, processes, and applications of these three protein sequencing technologies. First, I'd like to introduce Atman degradation. Developed by Per Atman in the 1950s, it is one of the methods for analyzing the N-terminal amino acid sequence in peptide chains or proteins. It's also called PTC method or PTH method, depending on the used reagent. When we use this method, we must meet the following criteria. 1. The sample must be pure, greater than 97%. 2. Note the molecular weight of the protein. 3. Note that the protein consists of several subunits. We can determine the amino acid composition of the protein and calculate the number of each amino acid based on the molecular weight by this method. What's more, we can also determine the amount of ammonia in the hydrolysate and calculate the amount of amide. So how does this method perform amino acid analysis of proteins? Atman degradation is divided into several steps, coupling, cutting, extraction, transformation, identification, etc. First, the pheoisothiocyanate, or PITC, is coupled with the N-terminal amino acid of the protein or polypeptide under an alkaline environment of pH 8 to form phenothiocarbamyl, or PTC, derivatives. The residuals in the peptide from the second amino acid are denoted as X2, X3 to Xn. The coupled product is then treated with trifluoroacetic acid. The first peptide bound at the N-terminus of the polypeptide protein is selectively cleaved to release the thiazolano aniline derivative of the amino acid residual. The main chemical reactions are as follows. TFA treatment of the PITC modified peptide results in an intramolecular cyclization in which the thiourea of the PITC adduct reacts with the carbonyl component of the first peptide bound. This cyclization releases PITC conjugated to the first amino acid, forming a new N-terminal amine while maintaining epsilon amine blocking. Subsequently, the released amino acid derivative is extracted and converted to a stable hydatoin theory amino acid under strong acidic conditions. The amide bound in the remaining peptide chain is unaffected. The amino acid can be identified by analyzing the resulting phenethylthiourea by HPLC. Each reaction, a polypeptide is obtained, which removes the N-terminal amino acid residual, and the remaining peptide chain can enter the next cycle and continue to undergo degradation. This method has the following influencing factors. 1. Not suitable for N-terminally blocked proteins. However, in this case, the polypeptide can be cut into smaller fragments by a proteinase and then subjected to liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry. If the modification that causes the protein N to be blocked is no, the N-terminal modification can be cleaved using the corresponding proteinase. And then the Atman degradation reaction can be used for sequencing. 2. If not enough chemical reagent is used, it may also generate a false peak in the PTH chromatogram, thus affecting the accurate determination of the amino acid sequence. 3. Since the chemical or physical properties of various amino acid residuals are different, the strength of the PTH signal may change. For example, tyrosine and serine are prone to dehydroxylization and cause peak changes. It is difficult to detect signals when cysteine is modified. Histidine and arginine are difficult to extract due to polarity. Methionine is easily oxidized. All these factors will cause the peak to be correspondingly low. 4. The detection of modified residuals with similar peaks to other unmodified amino acids will also lead to misidentification of amino acids. Admin degradation has the following advantages. 1. The reaction yield and recovery rate of phenoisothiocyanide and all amino acid residuals are quite high, so the reaction byproducts are few and can be accurately identified by chromatography. 2. For most amino acid residuals, a 30-minute coupling reaction time and a 5-minute cleavage reaction time are sufficient. 3. The remaining peptide chain is still intact, and the nascent N-terminal amino acid can be repeatedly assayed according to this method. 
The chemistry is described by Per Atman for N-terminal sequence characterization over 50 years ago remained the gold standard approach for identifying protein termini. Although Atman degradations well validated, limitations in coverage, speed, and versatility have prompted research for alternative methods. Peptide mapping analysis is an effective method for rapidly localizing protein sequences and is a commonly used strategy in protein identification. Mass spectrometry peptide mapping has become a mature and powerful tool for protein structure analysis. The method is to enzymatically or chemically degrade proteins into small peptides and then directly determining the molecular weight of the resulting peptide by mass spectrometry. The measured peptide molecular weight is then compared to the calculated molecular weight of the protein primary structure. The consistency between the observed molecular mass and the calculated molecular mass provides a basis for rapid validation of the protein structure. Conversely, inconsistency indicates that errors or modifications may occur in the proposed structure and provide information about the error or the location of the modification. Unlike Atman degradation sequencing, which analyzes each amino acid identity from the N-terminal end, peptide mapping methods only analyze the mass peptide, which are then compared to the theoretical peptide masses of known proteins to speculate the identity and sequence of the target protein. The following will introduce the process of this method. First, the protein is purified by 1D or 2D page, and the disulfate bonds in the protein are cleaved. Subsequently, it is digested with proteolytic enzymes. In order to improve the accuracy of peptide mapping analysis and post-translational modification analysis, proteins are usually digested with several proteolytic enzymes, including trypsin, lysine C, glutamic acid C, chymotrypsin, aspartic acid N, and arginine C. The above proteases were used to perform enzyme digestion and identification of the target proteins so to obtain peptide fragments and complete the determination of the protein sequence through splicing between peptide fragments. The target peptide fragment was separated and purified by high-performance liquid chromatography and analyzed by MALDITOF to obtain the corresponding spectrum. MALDI MSMS has high sample throughput and even enables analyzing several proteins at the same time. It is possible to save cost and efficiently obtain target data. Finally, the spectra obtained are compared with the data in a protein database to identify the target protein. This method can be applied to the study of peptide structure and identification of properties. And it's a key step in the characterization process of biotherapeutics. Through the bottom-up characterization, complete sequence coverage of biopharmaceutical molecules can be ensured. It can also be applied to a series of steps from drug discovery and development to clinical trials to bioproduction and QAQC. Only protein from the database can be identified using this method. If you need to study proteins that are not present in the protein database, then I recommend de novo protein sequencing. This method can identify novel peptides, unsequenced organisms, and antibody drugs. Next, we'll explain why the novel sequencing can obtain amino acid information without relying on protein databases. The principle of de novo protein sequencing is based on the fact that the digested peptides fragment regularly during mass spectrometry. The corresponding amino acid information and the post-translation modification of amino acids can be calculated according to the mass difference between the peaks of mass spectrometry. So how does this method work? First, the isolated and purified protein samples are cleaved by proteinases to break down the protein into smaller polypeptides of a certain size. Multiple proteases can be used for digestion to ensure that the complete sequence of proteins can be identified and analyzed. Two, high-performance liquid chromatography is used to separate and purify the enzyme digestion products, which was conduitive to more efficient and accurate mass spectrometry analysis. Three, the isolated peptide is subjected to soft ionization treatment to be protonated. These peptide ions are then screened by the primary mass spectrometry. 4. The peptide molecules screened by the primary mass spectrometry enter the collision chamber and collide with the indoor colliding gas. 
Commonly used colliding gas usually includes helium, argon, neon, methane, and other inert gases to induce peptide fragments and produce daughter ions, and then analyze the peptide sequence by secondary mass spectrometry. 5. Finally, each peptide is analyzed by the de novo sequencing analysis is performed on the secondary mass spectral peaks of each peptide by specific software, and the peptide sequences are spliced to obtain the full length sequence of the protein. As you may be wondering here, the experimental procedure for de novo sequencing of proteins is much the same as that of common tandem mass spectrometry. How does protein de novo sequencing directly analyze the sequence of proteins? In a previous section, the principle of de novo sequencing of proteins was mentioned. The theoretical basis for de novo sequencing of proteins was based on the fact that peptide sequences are regularly fragmented when induced by secondary mass spectrometry. Different fragmentation methods result in different positions of the peptide fragments, and different ion pairs can be formed. The fragment ions near the N terminals have three types of ions, A, B, and C. The fragment ions near the C terminals have three types, X, Y, and Z. For N terminal fragment ions, breaking a different size of the backbone produces a variety of different A, B, and C type ions. To further distinguish between the same type of ions produced at different breakpoints, each ion is labeled with a Roman numeral to indicate the location of the break. As shown in the figure, a1 and A3 refer to the same type of A-type ion with different fragment positions. Taking an N-terminal fragment ion as an example, the type A ion is an N-terminal ion generated by the cleavage of the carbon-carbon bound in front of the first amino acid carbon-oxygen bound. The B-type ion is an N-terminal ion generated by a carbon-nitrogen bound cleavage between the first and second amino acid. The C-type ion is formed by the nitrogen-carbon bound cleavage of the second amino acid. When ion fragmentation is performed using CID, collision-induced dissociation, or HCD, high-energy C-trap dissociation, the carbon-nitrogen bound of the ions collides with the inert gas. Y ions and B ions which are the most common ion pairs produced by the secondary mass spectrometry, are generated at the C-terminus and N-terminus respectively. When electron transfer dissociation is used for fragmentation, there is an electronic reaction process in which fragmentation occurs after electrons are added. Therefore, ion fragmentation can occur at the nitrogen-carbon bound to form CZ ions. TOF instruments may generate AX ions. So, after understanding the rules of fragmentation, how do we accurately analyze the amino acid sequence? As can be seen from the figure, ions produced by the fragmentation of each peptide segment have their own characteristics, among which type B ions are the most special because the position of the broken bound of type B ions lies between the two amino acid residuals. So the mass difference of every two adjacent B ions is equal to amino alkyl carbonyl. The R group masses of the different amino acids are different. Therefore, if the peak map of B ion can be determined in many mass spectral peaks of the second order mass spectrum, the mass of the R base can be calculated according to the difference in mass between two adjacent B-type ions. And finally, the corresponding amino acid can be determined according to the R group. In addition, if there is a post-translational modification on the amino acid residual, the mass difference between the B-type ions can also be used to calculate the quality of the post-translational modification thereby estimating possible post-translational modifications. However, determining the mass spectrum peak of B-type ions from many ion peaks in the second-order spectrum involves complex modeling and probability estimation. Therefore, it is unrealistic to rely on manual methods to select the peak map of B-type ions. Many de novo sequencing software can help us with this step. For example, Peaks and novel HMM. 
different software has different calculation principles for B-type ion maps. But all of the speculative data need to be compared with the actual measured maps to achieve accurate analysis of the sequence. De novo protein sequencing can be applied to 1. Identification of proteins 2. Characterization of post-translational modifications of proteins and 3. Analysis of the relationship between protein primary structure and function. Creative proteomics can provide peptide profiling and de novo protein sequencing analysis. We can provide you with advice and services on proteomics sequencing according to your needs. Please contact us for more information. We'd love to talk to you.